Assalamu alaikum, a very good day. Welcome to this small tutorial video regarding the chest tube drainage system that is atrium model chest tube drainage system. This small video is indicated mainly to introduce atrium chest tube drainage system to all of you. So that I am not going in detail about the indication, contraindications and complications of chest tube insertion and nursing management of chest tube. This is the atrium dual chamber chest tube drainage system. So we have dual chamber, the, the meaning is we have two collection chambers. We have single chamber, which means we have only one collection chamber. So that is the difference between single chamber and dual chamber collection system. So what I am planning to do is I will introduce you part by part with the function so that you will be clear how it functions. So the first and foremost thing is you have to understand when you open the packet of this particular atrium uh, dual chamber chest tube drainage system you will find like this you will be having here two tubings these two tubings are drainage tubes so these drainage tubings are connected directly to the chest tube of the patient so by the time the doctor is inserting the chest tube being a nurse you will be able to make sure that this drainage system is ready by the end of insertion so that he can directly connect the chest tube to this particular uh, tubings you can see two color codings in this one one is white in color other one is yellow in color so there is no more confusion in the drain because of this this color uh, this color changes for example if you have this white color once you connect this to a particular chest tube this drainage will be collecting in this white color chambers okay so if you are connecting this yellow color to the chest tube this drainage will be connected in the yellow color so that you can differentiate so that is the only thing in this color difference the first part I would like to introduce you is nothing but the base because if you keep the base in this lobed way and if you are keeping on the floor there will not be chance that this will fall down so that is very important being a nurse in the bedside if you are keeping the chest tube drainage system in the on the floor so you have to lock it in such a way that there is a cross so that it has a good stand okay so this is the first thing and other than that how we can hang this one so here also we have hangers available so these hangers can be hanged towards the frame of the bed so that it will be hanged down also especially this is very very useful during the time of transportation these are the two major safety systems so that we can avoid the uh, spillage uh, spillover to each chamber due to the falling down So the next part we are going to see about the collection chambers as I told you in the beginning if you are connecting this white colored tube to the chest tube all the drainage will be collecting in this white colored chambers okay so this one two both are white color chambers so what is the difference in this one and two the first and foremost uh, column where the blood or drain will come is in this one so once it is filled and if it is filled until 200 ml then the next will be it will be overflowed and it will start filling from here until 1900 ml so these both are considered as one collection chamber okay so you can see the graduations here 1 ml increments for the first 100 ml then you can see 2 ml increments for the next 200 ml then here you can see 5 ml increments until 500 ml and 10 ml increments until 1009 uh, uh, sorry 1090 ml so you can see the another collection chamber which is marked in yellow color here also the increments are very um, small that is why the total capacity is still 2100 ml the next important chamber of this particular drainage system is water seal chamber. So water seal chamber is where we will fill with the water and there is a barrier between the atmospheric air and the patient. So here uh, the nurse's responsibility is in the beginning before we connect to the patient we have to pour water until 2 cm level. 
inshallah i will be explaining this later but you will just understand the part this is the water seal chamber and where the water will be there once we fill water in the water seal chamber the thing what will happen is the bowl which is present here will start flowing up okay and this is known as calibrated water seal column so the bowl level will be having a lot of indications which i will be explaining you soon so this is about the water seal chamber and the last chamber which we can see is suction control chamber so this is a chamber that is controlling the suction we have two type of drainage system one is known as gravity drainage in the gravity drainage we are not applying external suction another one is suction controlled drainage so here we are applying external suction so the suction control chamber we can adjust in such a way that whether we have to do gravity drainage or we have to control the suction when the drainage is happening so these are the major parts of this particular chest tube drainage system now what we are going to do is we will see being a nurse what is our responsibility what all are the things we have to take care or we have to do during the time of insertion of the chest tube and also during the time of monitoring the patient with the chest tube because of the demonstration purpose i will not be following the proper infection control practices but when you do actual to the patient you have to follow all the infection control policy of your hospital facility here the first thing what we are going to discuss about once you open this drainage system you will find a funnel which is connected to the tube actually this tube will go to the water seal chamber so the first thing i am going to demonstrate to you is how you are going to prepare the water seal chamber how you are going to pour the water this is so easy you will take the distilled water or the water for irrigation which is and you will take this funnel and you will just pour until the funnel fills once the funnel fills you will simply open the valve here once you open the valve the water from the funnel will go to the water seal chamber so the amount which is present completely in the funnel is sufficient to complete 2 cm water level so the water level you have to maintain in the water seal chamber is 2 cm there is no confusion to fill that much because the 2 cm there is a line already drawn here in this chamber so that you can fill until this one if you are underfilled so this is about the water seal chamber as i told you when you pour the water there is a blue tinged flow bowl which is present in the side here you can see which is already moving up and down this flow bowl is the bowl which create this blue color okay so why the blue color the blue color is very good for our observation because the water is transparent as you know what is the significance of this flow bowl this flow bowl as the patient inspires and expires it will be oscillating through this calibrated water seal column so what is this calibrated water seal column will do because this machine is highly advanced you can even monitor the patient's intrathoracic pressure through this one so usually the normal intrathoracic pressure will be minus 4 to minus 8 minus 8 cm of water so here what will happen is during the time of inspiration or expiration this blue uh, sorry this uh, flow bowl will move up and down and the level of the flow bowl is one of the important indicators to find out the intrathoracic pressure of the patient inshallah after the suction control chamber i will be explaining how to monitor the intrathoracic pressure of the patient now when you come closer to this water seal chamber you can find here 1 2 3 4 5 graduations are written like this this is actually to detect the air leak so what is the air leak you know that this chest tubes we are inserting for two purposes mainly one is to remove water from the sorry one is to remove fluid from the pleural cavity or to remove air from the pleural cavity so if you are removing the air from the pleural cavity the air which is present inside the patient chest will be escaping through this air leak chamber air leak can be no air leak continuous air leak or intermittent air leak so if the air is leaking or the bubbling happens in this one which means the patient has mild air leak but as the degree increases if the air is escaping through the number 
which means the patient has high air leak. So this is how the nurse will monitor whether, whether the patient is having mild air leak or moderate air leak or very high or severe air leak. So what is the significance of air leak? If the patient is indicated for the chest tube because of the pneumothorax, the air leak is natural. It can happen. It is normal because the air is escaping from the patient. But at the same time, if you are inserting the chest tube for any kind of pleural effusion or to remove any blood from the pleural cavity and if the patient is having continuous air leak, which, is, which, which should be uh, informed to the doctor immediately. So the next chamber we are going to speak about is suction control chamber. So suction control chamber, as you know that this will control the suction. So what the nurse will do when you set up this particular chest drain unit. So here you can see a vent plug here. So you will just remove with your hand this vent plug. Okay. After that, you will be pouring water to this particular suction control chamber. So how much water you have to maintain in the suction control chamber? usually the water level should be 20 okay so it is already written or already marked here the maximum level of the water to be maintained so how you are going to pour you remember the funnel which we used to pour the uh, to pour water in the water seal chamber so you will just remove this funnel and you will keep it here and you will pour it until you fill 20 centimeter of 20 so you can see once I fill the water even the water is transparent but the color is turning into blue color so this is also for easy observation make sure that you will not under uh, fill or overfill the water than this 20 recommended after that you have to close this vent plug also so this is the next nurse's responsibility and one of the important steps also while setting up this chest tube drainage system. Once you fill the water in the suction control chamber, the next thing you have to do is you will connect this particular system to the wall mounted suction. You know that in most of the hospital facility, the suction will be wall mounted and through the younger suction tubings, you are getting the outlet. So here also same, you will be preparing the outlet with the younger suction tubings. So what you have to do, where you will connect this particular system to the suction through this particular port. You would remember this port when we opened the system, you found this one with the funnel. So I will just remove this funnel and I will connect this one to the wall mounted suction setup. So you know that now this valve is closed right now. So once you connect this wall mounted suction setup, you will just adjust this valve in the sense you will try to open a little so that you can find gentle or mild bubbling which should be steady bubbling in this suction control chamber. So when you find suction control chamber is bubbling because of the suction you applied, this is a setup you have to maintain for the patient. So now we connected the suction and there is mild, gentle, steady bubbling here in the suction control chamber. So from that, how we will come to know what is the suction pressure we are applying to the patient. Usually the suction pressure depends upon the level of the water in the suction control chamber. In the sense, suppose the suction control chamber has the water level 20. Here you can see 20. Actually this is 20 minus centimeter of water. So I will just describe this minus 20. So if the water level is in the 20, the suction pressure you are applying is minus 20 centimeter of water, irrespective of the suction pressure which is coming from the wall mounted suction setup. On the other hand, if the suction control chamber has the water level 15, and if it is connected to the suction and there is steady bubbling in this suction control chamber, the suction you are applying is minus 15 centimeter of water. Okay, so that is what, that is the significance of the water level in the suction control chamber. Usually almost all the physicians will ask for minus 20 centimeter of water suction pressure. If they ask minus 20 centimeter of water suction pressure, what you have to do, nothing, you will just fill the suction control chamber until the 20 level and you will connect this to the wall mount suction and you will adjust the valve here so that there is mild and steady bubbling. Suppose your doctor order is suction pressure beyond minus 20, like a minus 30, minus 40 centimeter of water. 
as i told earlier the water level will decide the suction pressure so here maximum level we can put is 20 which means the maximum we can provide is minus 20 cm of water suction pressure so if the doctor ordered minus 30 or minus 40 what you have to do in this situation we have a simple technique the first and foremost thing is you will fill until 20 i will take a non porous tea and you know this vent plug this vent plug has holes inside so what i will do is i will just cover these holes with non porous tape after that what i will do is i will go to the wall mounted suction setup and i will adjust to the suction setup in the meter how much the doctor desires so if the doctor need minus 30 i will adjust in the meter minus 30 so in this situation, you might not be feeling or you might not be seeing any bubbling in this suction control chamber or the bubbling will be very minimal. But if you do in this way, the wall mounted suction setup, how much you are keeping in that one, that will be the suction pressure you are applying to the patient. Next, we will speak about the intrathoracic pressure. As I mentioned earlier, the normal intrathoracic pressure will be like a minus 4 to minus 8 centimeter of water according to the respiratory status like inspiration or expiration. So the total pressure inside the thoracic cavity is always negative. Here, this particular chest drain unit can measure the intrathoracic pressure of the patient. It will give you an idea of the intrathoracic pressure of the patient. So how you know the intrathoracic pressure of the patient when it is functioning? Usually, when it is functioning, this particular flow bowl, this will be in this particular level and it will be oscillating. Okay, so the first thing you have to see what is the level of the bowl in this particular chamber. For example, this level of the chamber, level of the bowl in this particular chamber is in the 5. Okay, so first you will count minus 5 centimeter of water. Then you will add the water level in the suction control chamber because this is a pressure you are applying from outside also. So this is from the patient. So minus 5, minus 20, minus 25 centimeter water will be the uh, intrathoracic pressure of your patient. Another example, if this flow bowl will be oscillating in 10, in the, in the area of 10, so you will count this as minus 10 centimeter of water. You will add this one that is minus 20, so total minus 30 centimeter of water will be the intrathoracic pressure of your patient. So like this, manually you will get an idea of intrathoracic pressure of your patient. Then, what about the gravity drainage? In the gravity drainage, as you know that you are not controlling the suction from outside, it is just draining. So, the level of the bowl only will be the indicator for intrathoracic pressure of the patient because we are not controlling the suction from outside. So, for example, if the patient is in gravity drainage and this bowl is in the area of 5 or 4, the patient's intrathoracic pressure will be minus 4 cm of water. Okay. To avoid the confusion of this minus 4 cm of water or minus 10 cm of water, you have already written here very clearly what is the unit. So here it is written minus cm of water. Here also in the suction chamber it is written minus cm of water. So what is the level? Minus 20 cm, minus that much cm of water will be the pressure there. Suppose if the patient is laughing for a long time or coughing or we are milking the tube, there is a chance that the negative pressure that is intrathoracic pressure can go more negative side. So in this particular context, what will happen? This flow bowl will go beyond 20 cm of water. There is a tendency. So when the bowl is going beyond 20 cm of water for a long time, this is not good for the patient to keep that much negative intrathoracic pressure. Here in this particular drainage system, we have a special mechanism known as high negativity float valve. What is high negativity float valve? When the patient is having high negative intrathoracic pressure, when this bowl is reaching minus 20 cm of water for a long time, the high negativity float valve will activate and mechanically it will not allow this bowl to go beyond minus 20 cm of water and gradually it will help to decrease the intrathoracic pressure below this particular level. 
So in some cases, once the intrathoracic pressure is more like a minus 20 centimeter of water and it will be prolonging, in this kind of situation, we have to depress this bowl manually so that manually we can control the intrathoracic pressure of the patient. So how this happens is, once the bowl is in this level for a long time, what you have to do is, there is a manual control, this particular valve knob so you will just manually press this knob so that as you are pressing this knob this bowl level will be going down down and down so you will be keeping the bowl level in the desired level and you will be releasing but you have to take care one special thing that if the patient is on gravity drainage that is the suction is not applicable whether the patient is in gravity drainage you are not supposed to use this particular valve and because if the suction is not operating, when you are pushing this particular manual vent and if you are introducing the air to push this ball down, there is an accident chance that this air may go inside the patient's chest. So in order to prevent all these kind of complications, if your patient is, the drainage system is working along with the suction setup, then only you will put. In this case, if your patient is in this case, if your patient chest strain unit system is connected to the suction setup, then only you will operate this particular vent. That is the reason why this vent is kept behind, which is not easily accessible to everyone. Because if you are using this one in the gravity drainage patients, this will create complications. That is the reason. We spoke about negative pressure. So now, what if the positive pressure increase in the thoracic cavity? In which condition it happens? Usually in case of tension pneumothorax, there will be high positive pressure inside the patient thoracic cavity. If you are not releasing this positive pressure immediately, the patient may go for complications. So this particular system is highly advanced in such a way that it will detect the positive pressure in the patient and there is a valve known as positive pressure release valve. This is right over here. This positive pressure release valve will automatically get activated to release the positive pressure from the patient. So, which one are the major nurse's responsibility while monitoring the patient on chest drain? The first and foremost thing is monitoring the chest drain of the patient. What is the characteristics of the drain and what is the amount of the drain? If the patient has two chest tube, you will find the drain will come in the two chambers. If the patient has only one chest tube in place, always try to use single chamber uh, chest drain unit. Now this is dual chamber chest drain unit where those patients who has two chest drain so that you can have two kind of two drainage monitoring. You also have to monitor the amount and the characteristics of the fluid which is coming out from the patient. If any kind of sudden change like increase in the amount or fresh blood, all these kind of sudden change from the previous drainage, you have to inform immediately to the doctor. Always make sure that the base is kept in such a way so that this, this cross will create a good stand for this particular device. It will not fall down easily. Otherwise, there will be spillage in the inner compartments. The other major nurse's responsibility is the maintenance in the water seal chamber. The water seal chamber level should be always 2 cm water. So here how you will maintain the immediately when you open this one, as I told earlier, you will fill this one. At any particular point, especially if the air bubbling is more for a while, there is high chance for evaporation of the water. So in that case, this level of the water can come down. If you find that the level of the water came down, you have to manually fill this water. So here you can use this gommet for filling or removing the water from the water seal chamber. So you always make sure that you are using a needle which is 20 gauge or more like a 22 or 24 so that you can just directly prick inside and you can remove or you can increase the water level. 
So about the suction control chamber, again the important measure is you have to maintain the water level according to the doctor order. If the doctor order is minus 20 cm of water, you have to maintain the level 20. So when you maintain the level 20, you know that in the suction control chamber, if, uh, if the suction is connected, there will be continuous bubbling. So when there is continuous bubbling, there is high chance of evaporation of the water. And sometimes even by the end of the shift, the water level will come down. In this situation, what you have to do, you have to fill the water or if the water level is more, you have to withdraw the water. So how to fill the water? This is very easy to fill the water as I told in the beginning. You will just remove this particular vent and you will pour water until the desired level. Suppose if the water level is overfilled, what you have to do? You will go, you will turn this into the back and there is a gommet here. So through this gommet again by using 20 gauge needle or lesser size that is 22 or 24 size needle you will just insert this one and you will withdraw how much water you have to withdraw and you will maintain the level of the water uh, sorry suction control chamber also you have to make sure that this positive pressure release valve is not obstructed with anything that is the reason why it is kept in a particular place where you should not obstruct this particular positive pressure release valve also if you remember i told you this is to control the high negative pressure and you have to keep the ball down here so here also you are not supposed to press unnecessarily because if you know if you remember in case of gravity drainage it will create more complication so that is the reason why this is hide it at the back so you are not supposed to press unnecessarily So dear friends, how do you feel? This system is so easy if you understand. So watch the video till you understand and provide safe and quality care to the patient with the chest brain unit. Thank you.